there, I'm Audrey Williams and you're watching Jamaica Magazine, the program that brings you the information you need to make meaningful decisions about your life. On the show today, frigid temperatures and other extreme weather. We'll tell you what every Jamaican should know about that and other effects of climate change. And as Reggae Month draws to a close, we recognize some musical maestros who have made their mark in the industry. Before that though, the news and this important message. March 15. March 15. March 15. Employers, employees, and self employed persons take note. March 15, 2014 is the deadline to file your income tax returns for 2013 2014. Visit your local tax office or get 24 hour access by registering online at jamaicatax online.gov.jm. Remember to use the correct form. Self employed persons or persons with other sources of income should use the IT01 form. Individual Individuals whose only income is taxed at source, for example PAYE or withholding tax, should use the IT05 form, and those filing on behalf of companies should use the IT02 form. For more information, contact Tax Administration Jamaica's Customer Care Center at 1-888-TAX-HELP. That's 1-888-829-4357. Good day, I'm Samantha Allen and this is your GIS News for Thursday, February 27. An initial framework agreement has been reached between China Harbor Engineering Company Czech and the Port Authority for the proposed Portland Bight Goat Islands development. Transport Works and Housing Minister Dr. Omar Davies told Parliament Tuesday that the agreement sets out general terms and conditions to guide discussions for the development. He said the basic scope of Czech's project proposal is a greenfield development to be implemented in phases. The first phase of the project will include the development of an industrial park which will carry on the operations associated with storage, assembling, and packaging of goods in light industries, heavy industrial manufacturing, information technology, and skills training. It calls for dredging and land reclamation activities, as well as the development of critical infrastructure such as roads, bridges, electricity, water and sewage facilities. China Harbor is also proposing to construct a container terminal and berths to accommodate super post Panama vessels. A portside logistics zone will be built and a coal fire electricity generation plant constructed to supply facilities in the development area. In the meantime, the Transport and Works Minister has assured Parliament that a number of issues will have to be dealt with prior to the signing of any binding and definitive framework agreement for the Portland by development. Land acquisition, taxes and incentives, citizenship and electricity costs are among the factors to be settled. And as previously promised, an environmental impact assessment, EIA, will have to be done. I must emphasize that it's only after the completion of the EIA will the project be ready to be submitted to cabinet for a decision. A technical feasibility study is expected to be completed by the end of April. Preliminary designs for the first phase of the project will begin immediately after and completed by the end of June. In line with government's drive to increase visitor arrivals from the Orient, Cabinet has lifted the visa restrictions for Chinese nationals. Information Minister Senator Sandria Faulkner says tapping into the Chinese market has been difficult because citizens have to travel great distances to obtain a visa from the Jamaican Embassy in Beijing. The new regime will allow Chinese nationals to visit Jamaica as tourists for up to 30 days without a visa. China is now the largest spender in, the international, in international tourism globally. Our government has been making a concerted effort to develop new markets for our tourism industry by relaxing its visa requirements for nationals Government has made good on its promise to construct a separate holding areas at police stations for juveniles who come in conflict with the law. The National Works Agency serves as project manager for the initiative. During a recent tour of the Bridgeport facility, it was revealed that three of the first four juvenile detention centers being built will be ready by the end of March. We are making steady progress um, so that we, we will be in a position to deliver these facilities 
to the, 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 the ministry and, and ultimately to the, to the JCF. Um, will be using them. Facilities at Barrett Town in St. James, Monegan St. Anne and Bridgeport in St. Catherine are being built at a cost of $50 million. The fourth centre at Nain in St. Elizabeth has gone back to tender. The project is a collaborative effort of the Ministry of Youth and Culture, the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Jamaica Emergency Employment Programme. A music-laced Thanksgiving service fit for a reggae ambassador was what the late Third World frontman William Bunny Ruggs Clark received on Monday at the Holy Trinity Cathedral in Kingston. Bunny Ruggs' send-off brought together members of the clergy, politicians, the music fraternity, family, friends and well-wishers who paid tribute to his life, work and legacy. I am sad that our dear brother Bunny Ruggs has passed away but I'm also proud and comforted by the memories and the rich cultural legacy that he leaves behind. Bunny Ruggs passed away on February 2, just shy of his 66th birthday, which would have been celebrated on February 6. And finally, all is set for the annual Jamaica Day celebrations happening this Friday in schools and communities across the island. The Director of the Culture and Education Program at the Ministry of Education, Amina Blackwood-Meeks, tells JIS News that schools will be engaging students and community members on becoming great Jamaicans. Part of the activities will be for our our children to learn what it means to be an international citizen in 2014. How do you place yourself in terms of knowledge, in terms of skill, in terms of attitudes, in terms of seeing yourself as part of a broader collective, in terms of thinking globally but acting locally. The theme for Jamaica Day this year is celebrating Jamaica, sporting greatness in my community. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Samantha Allen. Thanks for watching. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. We've had our fair share of intense storms and active hurricane seasons. But have you seen what's been happening in some other places? The recent polar vortex and freezing temperatures in the U.S. South come to mind immediately. As scary as it may sound, that kind of extreme weather is likely to happen more often. And the reason? Two words. Climate change. Watch now for an update on efforts by the government to tackle the issue head on. Extreme heat. Extreme cold. Weather conditions around the globe have been going from one end of the scale to the next. In the winter of 2013, temperatures dipped to record levels in North America, Europe and Asia. It's forcing countries everywhere to stop and take stock, to seriously re-examine the issue of climate change. Thus, the government of Jamaica through the Ministry of Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change has embarked on a series of public consultations on the draft Green Paper for the Climate Change Policy Framework and Action Plan. The first of these consultations with residents of St. Mary, St. Anne and Portland. The Ministry has stepped up its public education on climate change. The first step? discussions with members of the public to get feedback on the Climate Change Policy Framework and Action Plan, which was approved by Parliament in November 2013. The discussion began with a simple definition of climate change. Climate change involves distinct changes in measures of climate, lasting for long periods of time, resulting from human activity. So it's not just variation that would be normal. But these are long-term changes, almost permanent changes in the weather over time. We need to get the message out. And um, although it is currently very popular, the, the, the whole education about climate change is, is somewhat behind. Because it's with us and it's all around us. Longer droughts, heavier rains, more severe droughts, you know, Varying extremes. And these extremes can cost the country millions. Severe droughts, heavier rains, and intense storms spell disaster. 
like Hurricane Ivan in 2004, which cost Jamaica 36.9 billion US dollars and wiped out 8% of the country's gross domestic product that year. So government crafted a climate change policy framework and action plan to ensure people understand the importance of climate change mitigation and include mitigation in every aspect of planning across all sectors of society. The policy also supports institutions that will do climate change research and inform the rest of the country. These policy goals were explained to about 120 residents who turned up at the St. Mary Parish Church to hear more about the policy and give their opinions. Local climate change experts made the link between climate change phenomena and the day-to-day -day experiences of most Jamaicans. The fact is that temperature is rising and according to the scientists, at a rate of 0.1 degree every decade. So every 10 years, the temperature goes up by one-tenth of a degree. Anybody experiencing temperature increases? Have you noticed that the nights are getting warmer? We're having more warm nights, more warm days, and fewer nights that are very cold. Have you been experiencing that? So that's a part of the reality of climate change. In fact, in less than 10 years, global experts say Kingston will experience significant changes due to climate change. With the aid of charts, the ministry's principal director for the climate change division showed residents the levels of temperature change to expect. Different places will be affected differently. Uh, for example, in the western section of the island, the section um, number two, three, um, eight, and nine, those sections, um, Westmoreland, Hanover, uh, St. James, they will significantly be affected. But while some damage has already been done, residents were told how government was working to slow or cushion the effects of climate change. Our mitigation measures, and these are measures that we take to reduce um, greenhouse gas emissions, and also measures that we take to remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. And on the other hand, adaptation measures are used to address the generally accepted inevitable impacts of climate change on the natural and built environment. Practical examples include rainwater harvesting to deal with the effects of drought, raising houses and other buildings to deal with the damaging effects of flooding and more. These are measures now being used in the development orders for St. Anne and Portland where local authorities will identify sites for new urban settlements that will lessen their vulnerability to natural hazards, outlawing practices such as building in disaster-prone zones. In the meantime, residents were advised of some basic environmental no-no's. We have a tendency in this country to burn everything we see inside. All the garbage you collect, you burn. The trees you cut down, you burn. This burning releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and that affects the climate, that affects the environment. And truly, it was an interactive session with residents voicing concern about environmental issues. We are part of the process. So I'm recommending that you look at not just this mass meeting, but at the parishes or at the community level where the document can be looked at at that level. So we get it beforehand so we could have gone through it, made some notes, made some comments. Policy framework has been circulated for some time now. It is in parish libraries across Jamaica. It is available electronically on the website of our ministry. The document is with parish councils, the National Association of Parish Development Committees, and through the Best Communities Competition, that network, we're getting it out. So we will do our best effort
point duly noted and welcomed by Minister of Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change Robert Pickersgill, who promised to simplify the issues. Still, the residents felt good about the discussions. Very informative. I believe this is a good initiative by the government in, the, in combating climate change in Jamaica. This is a growing concern in our country and will affect our children to come. I would just like to applaud the chairman who is here today who has been informing us about climate change as some people are not aware of some of the things discussed about climate change. In the words of Minister Pickersgill, with climate change, we must change. For GIS News, I'm Tamara McHale. Disasters can happen at any time, but wouldn't it be good to have a device that could predict how much damage your house would suffer during an earthquake or a flood? Truth is, there is something that can make those kinds of predictions. Let's take a look. Floods and earthquakes are two of the most common natural disasters. But unlike earthquakes, which usually take us by surprise, flooding, to some extent, can be predicted. But when it is, what should we do with the information? And how do we safeguard ourselves and properties against this eventuality? Through the use of revolutionary technology, awareness of the possible outcomes of a natural disaster has become more advanced. Persons are now able to use data on location, roof and house type to create a simulation of what may happen in an earthquake, tropical storm or hurricane. Well, the simulation was designed to combine place, type of structure and event because it's, Jamaica is vulnerable to four events, four types of events, hurricanes slash tropical storms, um, landslides, floods, and earthquakes. But the same building that you live in is exposed to all four. And that same building you live in will react differently to all four. Jamaica's landscape equally sits in low-lying and coastal areas as on hills and valleys. The country is also in an earthquake zone, so it can't hurt to do a little research on all the what-ifs, right? You'll be able to go inside your house and see your roof being blown off or your slab roof staying on. You'll be inside your slab roof house when earthquake shakes it comes down on you. We'll be able to have those type of simulations. How about the possible outcome of a Category 5 hurricane? If you're living in a zinc roof, wooden house that is built on stilts, in a river valley. So now that these predictions are available to us, just how useful are they? This simulator is now designed to take all of that information, the conventional knowledge that we as academics know, or the disaster management professional knows, dump it online as we have. Let the developer, housing developer, have access to it and see for himself. Let the parish council person or the development approval authority play with it. And once they've viewed it, the authorities can use the data to plan areas for development, approve or deny development applications and build better. The simulator is not just a special effect disaster interactive tool, but one that takes into account the realities of environmental and living conditions here in Jamaica. And the simulator also seeks to bring an awareness of the impact natural disasters may have on lives, properties and businesses in relation to the country's national goals. The effect a hazard would have on everything ranging from the individual to the nation is important and scaremongering only goes so far. The simulator allows you to either scare yourself or reassure yourself, but it's based on reality. 
Another useful element to this drill is the data it uses. Historical data are planted and come to life through the simulator to facilitate emergency responses as well as forward planning in action. Knowing where hazards are and knowing where they are not is extremely valuable information to, business, to businesses such as insurance. Instead of blanketing Portland as a hazard prone parish, we can know which parts of Portland are hazard prone, therefore allowing people in Portland who are not in hazard prone areas to get lower insurance premiums. You, you underwrite them differently. Um, and you also underwrite more accurately and properly the people who are in hazard prone zones. So, if you have already bought your dream home or are thinking of buying or building, you may want to try a few simulation exercises to test the stability of your home or to find out if where you intend to build is the best place to put down roots. Let's celebrate Jamaica to the world. Fastest man in the world. First Jamaican woman to win gold in Olympic 100 meter sprint. An upcoming global superstar. Mouth watering meals. And a vibrant set of people. We are Jamaicans. Let's get together and bring back the love. As we close out Reggae Month, we salute a few of the greats, reggae artists and producers who are awarded national honors in recognition for their contribution to the music industry. The National Honors and Awards is a momentous occasion, a celebration of achievements and service in various fields. Friends, families, well-wishers, and even strangers all share in the symbolic investiture as Jamaicans from across the island through a nomination and specialized selection process each year are conferred the prestigious titles. The 2012 National Honors and Awards recognized seven members of the music industry. Toots Hibbert, Bunny Whaler, Peter Ashbourne, Lee Scratch Perry, Tony Gregory, and Clinton Jackson with the very rare order of merit also given posthumously to the late Peter Tosh. <laughs> Jamaican music <laughs> reaches the soul of the people, unites us, and makes us forget our differences and problems. Musicians past and present have made a lasting impression on this lucrative and entertaining industry, leaving those touched by their works with no choice but to pay tribute. Mr. Frederick Nathaniel Toots Hibbert. Give it to me, Toota. Give it to me, Toota. On October 15, 2012, the engaging performer approached the podium at King's House to accept his second national honor. The first, received years before, was the Order of Distinction Officer Rank. This time around, he was receiving the Order of Jamaica. A singer and songwriter, as well as a player of instruments, Frederick Toots Hibbert has made significant contribution to the development of reggae music in Jamaica. His contribution also spans festival song competitions, winning with songs such as Sweet and Dandy and Watabamba. In the 50th year of his music career and the 25th of his passing, Peter Tosh was honored with the Order of Merit posthumously, the third highest national award in Jamaica, long overdue, some might add. This was received by his daughter, Niambi McIntosh. Peter Tosh was honored for his influential contribution to the evolution of reggae music.
Another revolutionary and holder of the Order of Distinction, Commander Rank, Bonnyweller's musical career continues to shape the development of Jamaica's music, resulting in his second honor, the Order of Jamaica, on October 15, 2012. His son, Abby Jawela, received on his behalf. He's done a lot for Jamaica in general, but reggae music and music, um, he's seen it through a lot of stages and he's seen it go through a lot of genres to become what it is today. So I think he's, um, he, he, would, he would feel, I think he does feel like he deserves such an award. And, and I, like I said, he's honorable Neville Livingston now, so he's very proud. Two thousand three Grammy winning producer Lee Scratch Perry was among the likes of Peter Ashburn to join the commander rank in the Order of Distinction. A veteran musician and producer, Lee Scratch Perry played a major role in the development and acceptance of reggae and dub music in Jamaica and overseas. Meanwhile, Peter Ashburn, a very accomplished composer, pianist and performer, has been one of Jamaica's major composer arrangers of commercial music for more than three decades. Noted as one of Jamaica's most important and distinctive reggae bass players and pioneers, Clifton Jackie Jackson is also one of the founding fathers of Jamaican popular music. His role in the growth and development of our music during the ska era of the mid-1960s helped to usher in another of Jamaica's musical styles, rock steady. Released in 1982, Gypsy Girl remains a favorite among music lovers and to date is one of Tony Gregory's signature songs. In the music industry for decades, this reggae, soul and R&B recording artist has worked alongside Baron Lee and the Dragoneers as lead vocalist in the 60s. The way that you The soother of our souls. Not to mention the fun and excitement as it draws people together to unwind and have a good time. Indeed, musicians are heroes of a different kind. That's how we bring the curtains down on Jamaica Magazine. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same station. In the meantime, there's more where this came from. Check out our website, jis.gov.jm, and our Twitter handle, at JIS News. If you've got an idea for future programs, send them to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. In the meantime, make an appointment. Your TV, our program. Fresh content, tomorrow. I'm Audrey Williams. What good? This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.